Hey everyone, so today I'm going to do a flower painting. I'm hoping it looks like a flower. Um, ever since I started using the blow dryer, I'm like, man, this would make such a great flower painting. So I'd like to do another trial to get there. And I think the way I'm going to lay out my paint is going to be different this time. And I'm hoping it works out well. Um, so as far as what I've got here, I've got 24 by 24 canvas. Um, I've got my colors all mixed up. I've got some white, which is the uh, Art Alternatives Titanium White. I also have a big cup of that mixed up too. So I can use this cup for inside the flower where I want some highlights done. And I can use this for the outside of the canvas. If I have any left over, I can always keep it for another painting because you know I always use white, um, at least some. So in these cups, so this one right here, I was trying to make a, kind of like a creamier white, and I thought, hey, let me put just a little tiny dab of burnt umber in there. Well, duh, umber has a little bit of red tone to it, so I used the Sargent Art uh, Burnt Umber, and I got pink. But it was a really pretty pale pink. It wasn't the pink that I wanted, or the color that I wanted for the painting I was doing, but I went ahead and saved it, mixed it up and saved it because I know I'll use that one. Um, so in this cup, I've got uh, Master's Touch Violet. And in this cup, I've got that awesome Berry Wine, the Folk Art Berry Wine. And in, again, in all of my paints, use a little bit of Floetrol and a little bit of water. And I always look for that steady stream. I just did a video when I mix these colors um, to try to show what I'm looking for when I'm when I'm mixing my paints. So um, check that out if you want to know exactly how I mix those. Um, so I'm going to lay this out kind of in a more circular pattern, but I'm going to do little sections all around um, of the different colors. And I'm going to get my handy dandy blow dryer. And we're going to see what comes out of it. I really hope this turns out well because I would really like to do a flower. So wish me luck and let's see what we get.
All right, so I thought I would leave it alone, and now I want to do more, um, but hopefully not mess this up. So I took just a teeny tiny bit of yellow, um, of yellow, and put it in just a little bit of white. I just want to do a little pop of color in the middle. So I'm going to drop, ooh, am I going to do just drops? I might just do some drops. I don't know. Might mix it up. I might just do some drops. Oh, I kind of like that. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. Gives it a little bit of interest in the middle, but I don't want to do too much. All right, guys, that's it. I will bring you in in a little while, show you a closer look when it gets to drying. Um, this was fun. Tell me how flowery you think this is. I don't think it's very flowery, but I guess I would have to be able to define petals if I did that. And that's what I was trying to do by putting those layers in. Um, but didn't quite make it exactly how I wanted to see it. But it's still pretty fun. And I love the colors. So tell me what you think, guys. Have a great day. All right, guys, this is about an hour later. I had a lot of fun with this painting, so let me bring you in closer. You can uh, see some of the details. I like that part a lot. Okay, so this is a few days later, and I'm back with the dried result, and I'm super pumped. Not because I love this painting, because there's some cool aspects about this painting, but I'm not in love with this painting. But the cool thing is, 
is that I, it cracked. And I know you think I'm probably crazy for thinking that's a cool thing, but you can't learn unless you actually have the opportunity to learn. So I'm super pumped about that. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So let's see if we can get in close. I've got my automatic focus on, which sometimes works well, and other times it's just annoying. But if you can see some of this separating and cracking right in here. All right, we got that. And then over here, there's a bunch more. See that and that and that. Yay. So, and there's some more over here. See, automatic focus. Don't like me. There we go. I'm talking about right here. So, what I learned. Okay, so I sometimes leave my, I put the paintings on top of my oven or my stove when I want them to dry because I want my kitchen table back. It's starting to get warmer outside, so I'm going to move back out into the garage and start building out my shop. Um, but the cool thing is, is that, well, I put it on the oven, on top of the oven, which I have a flat top stove. And my son made a chicken pot pie or a turkey pot pie. And what happened was it got hot. So some of this was dry and other parts were not in this area was not dry. Um, and so I think it has two things. I think I learned two things. A, I probably need to put more Floetrol in my paint. Um, so I'm going to play with that a little bit and B, I'm going to need to make sure that it, when, especially when I use a lot of paint that I don't dry too fast. So the fact that it got heated up on top of the stove it was probably only on there for maybe 20 minutes while it was hot, but ultimately that was too long. It cracked. So I love that it did crack because, and I wanted to show you guys because I know some people think, God, I'll use a lot of paint and so therefore... I should experience some of the cracking that I haven't. So I was excited to actually experience that and be able to learn from it. So tell me what y'all think. Um, but this was a fun one and I'm glad that I did it and I'm glad that I learned some things from it. So I hope y'all have a great day. If you have any comments, please comment below. If you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button because I got a lot more ideas and a lot more things that I'm going to be working on in the future. So, uh, Love you guys. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.